Hey guys, it's Sarah. I mean, Saria. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make the book. <laughs> this is the, well, inspired by the book from Hocus Pocus. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. It is all Dollar Trees. That's right. Everything on here is from Dollar Tree. I did use spray paint, which you can't get at Dollar Tree. However, you can get acrylic silver paint for 50 cents at Walmart. So, still under a dollar. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so these are all of the supplies that I got from Dollar Tree. I got these little plastic snakes from the Halloween section. They are like glow in the dark, but I went ahead and spray painted mine silver. You can also use silver acrylic paint to do this or even silver nail polish, which they do have at Dollar Tree. And then I also got this pack of bracelets in the toy section. It comes with seven and I went ahead and took one and spray painted that silver as well. That's what I'm going to be using for the lock over the eye. And then these are the acrylic paints that I used. I also ended up using black acrylic paint. I get mine from Walmart. They're 50 cents each. I do have Mod Podge here, but I ended up not using it because I kind of made my own. I also use a sponge brush from Dollar Tree. These ping pong balls is how I'm going to make the eye. They do have fake eyes in the Halloween section, but I don't like how they look. I will be using glue to make my own Mod Podge in order to paper mache. And then also a chapter book. I love the chapter books at Dollar Tree for this because the pages look like they're falling out and really old. I'm starting out with a small container of water and then paper towels to paper mache, which you can also get at Dollar Tree. And then I'm adding in my glue. You're gonna want about 50% glue, 50% water, and then go ahead and just mix it with your brush. And this is going to be how we make the texture on the book look like skin, which is really gross, but fun. <laughs> So before I get started on the paper mache part, I'm actually going to go ahead and glue down the eye. I made this book three times, once with Rowan, once for Erica, and then once for myself. So this is um, the best order to go in, I've found. So I went ahead and cut my ping pong ball in half, and I'm actually going to use the smaller half of the ping pong ball because it lays flatter. Um, also, if it gets a little bit almond shaped, that's actually better because it will look more like an eyeball than if it's a perfect circle. And then I'm just adding hot glue to the rim of the ping pong ball and then putting it down on the book. You do want to leave a little bit of space between the eyeball and the edge of the book because you want to have room for your lock to fit over the eye. So that bracelet that you have, you can kind of use it as a guide just to make sure that you have good placement of your eyeball. So now I'm going to get started with the paper mache. Dollar Tree, um, has paper towels if you're needing them but I'm just gonna go ahead and start tearing these into completely random pieces um, I did try overall for the top coat not to have straight edges because I felt like that didn't look as good um, but if you look here I let them wrinkle and gather up and stuff because it gave it that kind of weathered skin look that the book has but I'm just dipping it into my uh, glue water mixture and then painting over it with that mixture and then you're also going to want to go over with your finger and kind of smooth out the texture from the paper towel. I'll show you that in a little bit. So I am going to show you how I do the eyelid. You're going to just take small pieces of the paper towel and just curve it around the eye. You do have to do quite a few layers around the eye in order to make it look more realistic. And then just continuing to cover the book. I did not cover my entire book and I wish that I had because covering up the black cover of the book was a lot harder than just painting over white paper towels so if I could go back I would actually cover the entire book um, and then how much texture you want your book to have is obviously personal preference but I would make sure that you just go over and kind of smooth your finger over it to get rid of those little dots so this is the zoomed in shot of me doing the eyelid as you can see I'm just kind of taking small thin pieces and curving it around the quote-unquote eyeball and I'm doing this on both the top and the bottom. And then I'm just continuing down the book, adding more texture as I go.
and then obviously you're going to want to repeat this process onto the back of the book as well as the spine of the book. I chose not to add in the snake detailing um, that's on the back of the book or like the fingers that are on the spine. You obviously could do this using some um, methods that I'm going to show you in a little bit. I ended up doing the stitches using my hot glue gun and I think that you could absolutely apply that method to doing the lines of the fingers. Um, and then the snakes that we're going to add to the front you could also add on to the back if you wanted to. But my back of my book is not really being displayed so I didn't honestly see the point in adding a bunch of detail to something that's not really going to be seen all that much. And then you will just continue to do this paper mache technique across the entire book. I am going to speed this up just so that this video is not 45 minutes long. You do want to let this dry. Um, I would suggest at least two hours. I let mine dry overnight and I do think if you can that that's probably the best way to do this. But if you're on a time crunch, I would say at least two hours. If you touch the book and it feels dry, you're probably good to paint it. Okay, so I lost the footage of how I did the laceration, so I'm just going to show you on this piece of construction paper. Basically, I just laid down a line of hot glue. Um, I did pull up a picture of the book and try to use it kind of as a reference point, but honestly, on my third book, I just freehanded it. And then I went in and did a line right next to the original line that I did. The biggest thing to me was just to make sure that all the lacerations kind of intersected at different points and to keep those two lines of hot glue very close together but leave a tiny gap so that you have a space to paint in between and make it look like it is um, different pieces of skin that have been stitched together. That's a sentence that I never thought I'd say. Okay, so it is the next day and I'm going to go ahead and paint my book. You are going to see my background change in a little bit because I actually filmed making this book twice and then just used the clips that came out a little bit more clear. <laughs> so I'm starting out with that chocolatey brown and that tan color and I'm trying to combine them to make kind of like a fleshy tone. Um, this is just personal preference on what you think the color looks best as. You do want to make it kind of a medium tone because you, we are going to go over and dry brush with a darker brown and then also a lighter tan. So to paint this, I am just sponging it on. I know in this clip I already have the stitches and the eyeball done. I am going to go back and show you guys that, but I do think that it's best practice to paint um, before you've added the little individual stitch marks. Um, doing the eyeball ahead of time doesn't really matter, but I'm just kind of showing you guys the process the steps in order that I think makes the best result. So I went ahead and started painting and then I'm going to go back and add in the detail between the, um, I don't know what to call them, like the lacerations <laughs> after I've done my first coat of the medium brown paint. When you are painting this, make sure that you're kind of like dabbing the paint on and not spreading it across the book because you don't want to tear your paper mache. It also helps it get into all the little crevices that you created with this texture. Okay, so now that you have the book all painted in the first coat, you're going to go in and fill in a darker brown color to in between these laceration marks that you kind of made. So I'm taking that chocolatey brown and then I did end up adding just like a dab of red. You really don't have to do this. It did not make a huge difference. But what did make a difference is that I also ended up adding in some black. I used chalkboard paint, but I do think that black acrylic paint would work equally as good. You just want a very, very dark brown. It makes the um, kind of, I don't know what else to call them, the lacerations between the skin, quote unquote, <laughs> um, just look a little bit better and deeper when you're painting them. So here you'll just see me really darkening up this brown color. By the way, if you have a really, really dark brown, you could also just use that. 
And then I'm going in with this very tiny brush and just painting in between the hot glue lines that I laid down originally. And I'm just going to continue this across all of the lines that I made. If you get a little bit on the raised up part, that's totally fine. Just try to keep it as in between the raised up hot glue marks as you can. And now I'm going to go ahead and dry brush to add some variation to the cover of the book. I'm just starting out with that really light tan color that I have and I'm taking the stippling brush that I got from Walmart in like a big pack of brushes. Um, you do want to make sure that this is a paintbrush. Dollar Tree also has paintbrushes and I think that any paintbrush will work for this. And you're just dry brushing the color on to add some dimension to the paint. So just dip your brush in the paint, wipe the excess off, and then you're just going to kind of quickly and messily paint the book. Now I'm doing the same thing with that darker brown color. And just dry brushing across the book. I really liked how it looked adding it specifically to the spine where it would be really worn as well as the edges of the book. And then made sure to get it around the eyeball. Be very gentle with this because that paper mache part is raised up and if you hit it too hard you could dent it or tear it. So now I'm going in and doing the individual stitches with my hot glue gun. This is very easy. You literally are just doing individual small lines to make them look like stitch marks across the lacerations. And just continue these all the way down. Try to keep your spacing relatively even, but at the same time, this is supposed to look messy and kind of crazy, so um, don't feel the need to be perfect. I am taking a break while my hot glue gun heats back up because it had kind of cooled off a little too much, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in the eye. So I took just a brown Sharpie, and I'm drawing the iris of the eye, and then I'm going to go in with a black Sharpie and do the pupil. I believe the book in the movie is actually more of like a green kind of hazily looking eye color, but I think that this works. <laughs> And now that my hot glue gun is heated back up, I'm going back in and finishing each of the stitches that I needed to do on the rest of the cuts. While I was doing the stitches, I noticed that I had a few spots on the book that didn't get totally covered with paint. So I'm just creating that original um, medium tan color that I had to paint the book originally. And I'm just going in with a tiny brush and kind of filling in the sp any spots that I missed. And now I'm going back in with my hot glue gun and finishing up the stitches. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the lock around the eye. I just took that silver bracelet. I'm adding a very thin line of hot glue around it and then just pressing it down firmly around the eye. After these are all done and dry, I am going to go ahead and go in and paint them. I did decide to use just that really light tan color that I had. Um, you could do silver, I think, but I just didn't want it to stand out too much. If your bracelet does not fit, I actually did figure out you can cut these bracelets very easily with a pair of wire cutters into smaller chunks and then glue down each chunk at a time if you need to kind of jimmy rig how it fits around the eye.
Okay, so I went ahead and placed down my snakes and now I am going to go in and glue them down. I know that the um, snake next to the spine actually has like a little plate underneath it in the movie and you could do that with maybe some magic mold or by cutting something small and plastic that you can spray paint and gluing it under it. I didn't feel the need to do that, but if you're looking to do that, that's just two things that come to mind that you could do. Um, to hot glue these down, I did just go ahead and fill the inside of them with hot glue and then just firmly press them down on the book. These snakes can actually be folded if you want them to look twisted up on the corners of the book like they do in the movie, but I didn't like how they kept kind of popping up and I kept having to re-glue them down. So I just decided to cut off the end of the snake and just do kind of half a snake coming out from the corner of the book. All right, guys, that pretty much does it for this tutorial. This is what the book looked like when it was all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please make sure you've subscribed so you don't miss out on any of my future upcoming Hocus Pocus DIYs, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.